odd a little tweak. G'day everyone and welcome back to another video. Now it has come to my attention after reading the YouTube comment section and my Instagram DMs that a lot of you would like to know what gear I'm using, like a full rundown on what gear I'm currently using. With 2021 just coming to a close, I thought there'd be no better time to do a full rundown on the gear I'm going to be using going into the new year. The gear that I'm going to be covering is obviously your rod, reel, line, lures, leader, etc. Well, knowing me and my tackle buying addiction, this gear will for sure change as the year goes on, but for now, this is what I'm going to be using. Oh, also, last thing, before we get into the video, just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone for helping me surpass 4K subscribers. When I first started making videos on YouTube, I never thought so many people would enjoy and share it so much, but you all really seem to enjoy the content that I'm making, so I'm gonna keep it coming. Keep the videos coming. I'm also getting a new camera that should be here in the next two to three weeks, which will take my content to a whole nother level. Better cinematics, better shots, better close-ups, better everything, so get keen for that one. I think I've pretty much covered everything, so let's get into the video and get into the rundown of what gear I'm gonna be using going into 2022. Hope you all enjoy. Let's get into it. All right, we've just let a bit of light in. Wow, that lighting is terrible. That was very, very exposed. Um, anyways, here is my rod and reel arsenal that I'm gonna be going over. And I've also put down a leader in front of each rod, which has its purpose. Just so it's a little bit easier for you to understand, so. We're gonna be starting things off. Also, don't mind the messy room cord setup. I know, it's very dodgy. Anyways, we're gonna be starting off with my ultra light broom stuff. Now this combo right here, as I was just saying, is specifically for my broom stuff. My ultra light, soft plastic or hard body broom stuff. This rod is the Miller Rods Grub Freak LT. It is seven foot three, one to three kilos, and super light. It's super light, but super pricey. I think these retail for around about 565, maybe 570. I could be wrong on that, don't correct me, but I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, yeah, it is worth every penny in my opinion. This is for the serious angler that uh, really just wants to enjoy not necessarily the food factor of fishing. They want to enjoy time on the water with good quality gear, and this rod right here gets the job done. Now I've also got that paired with the Daiwa Luvius 2500 LT. This is the shallow spool model, and I've got that paired with eight pound Daiwa J braid in the eight carrier. It comes in four and eight carrier. I've got this in the eight carrier. Absolutely love this reel. This retails for around about the same price as the Miller rod, and it's just a beaut. Absolute beaut. Love it to bits. Probably my favorite combo out of the lot. Now when it comes to leader that I'll be using on this, I'm mainly, because I'm gonna be mainly targeting brim, it's gonna be a six pound leader. Six pound or five pound is really good for your brim. Even I even know the tournament guys go down to four pound, but I think six pound is a really good brim all rounder. And that's just what I use on that combo. Now, moving on to combo number two, which is a slight upgrade from combo number one. We have Daiwa Infeet rod. I'm going to start off with the rod. The Daiwa Infeet EX rod. It's a 7 foot 2, 1 to 4 kilo. So it's not a huge, huge difference when it comes to the line weight. But yeah, it is that slight upgrade which I do tend to throw slightly heavier lures and bigger lures on there. Not huge ones, but just your nice medium range. As you can see, I've got a little surface lure on there. I haven't been using this rod for very long, but already start to fall in love with it. Very, very light, as you can see. Quite literally balancing that on my finger. And yeah, it's just an overall great rod. I think these retail for around about 500 or 550, I don't know. Once again, more than definitely wrong, but yeah, absolutely love it. I also got that paired with the Daiwa Revelry MQ 2500 shallow spool with eight pound braid once again, and that is eight carrier. Like we were saying, eight carrier, four carrier, this is eight carrier. I seem to get less wind knots when using this, so that's why I use it. There we go. Very nice, very light. And now this is the leader that I'll generally be running on this combo. This is J Thread FC eight pound. So obviously that little step up from your six pound, this is what I use, <laughs> eight, eight pound. This video is probably gonna be all over the place. I'm super bad at these sit down videos, but all right, let's just keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. 
We'll go to this little Atomic because he's sitting by himself without a reel. This is the Atomic Arrows Brim Surface. Literally it's called Brim Surface. And if we go over the specs, it is a 7 foot rod, 1 to 4 kilo. So once again, just like the Infeet, and I'll be using surface lures specifically on these. Little sugar pens, little slippery dogs, prawns, you name it. Any surface lure for brim and whiting, that's what I'll be chucking around on that. So that is my surface stick for the meantime. And just like this combo here, I'll generally run an 8 to 10 pound uh, leader on there. Always fluorocarbon as well. I often get the question if I'm using monofilament or fluorocarbon. All these leaders that I'm using are fluorocarbon. Right, I think probably having that there would make things better lighting wise so you can actually see what I'm doing properly. Moving on to my bass combo. We'll start off with the rod because we've been starting off with the rod with everyone. So this is the Daiwa Rebellion. I actually had to write this down on my phone. I've recently purchased this rod probably close to two and a half, three weeks ago. So I'm really just starting to get properly into my bass fishing. But this is the Daiwa Rebellion. It's a six to 14 pound rod, and I'm pretty sure it's six foot three. Now it's pretty difficult to understand where the size comes in on this rod, just because on the back writing there, it doesn't, it doesn't really say. It just says Rebellion 631 ML FB, and then the lure, the ounce and line weight. Six foot three, we'll call it. Dollar Rebellion, six to 14 pound, six foot three, bait cast outfit rod, specifically for targeting Australian bass. And I also have this paired with the Daiwa Alphys SV TW. Uh, don't know what size the reel is. It's got 7.1 on the side. I'm very, very dodgy at this stuff. So you're just gonna have to excuse me. A little bit of a bait cast newbie, but yeah. It's very light, once again, like all the combos, very, very light. I have given this a little go for bass, and I'll pop some pictures up on the screen right now, and I'm absolutely loving it. The actual lure that I was catching the bass on as well was this exact chatterbait that I've got tied on. That's just a little chatterbait. I don't know what the, uh, the brand name is, but got a little dial bait junkie minnow on there. And yeah, that just seemed to get the job done on the bass on that day. That's that stick covered. Bass specific. Yeah, pretty pricey combo. As you can tell, I do like my high-end gear, but I also like quality and stuff that's gonna last me a long time. That's why I've gone with the rods and reels that I've gone with. Almost forgot to uh, mention the line that I use on this. This is a 20 pound Daiwa J braid. Once again, in the eight carrier. You really don't wanna be going any lighter than 20 pound when it comes to using bait casters, specifically for Australian bass. You get a lot less wind knots and you can get a lot better casts when you're using that heavier line. So I think 20 pound braid is a really good all-rounder if you're targeting Aussie bass. And the leader that I usually use on this is a, what is this? This is a Shimano Oshia leader in the 12 pound. I'll generally use around about 10, 12 to 14 pound for bass, but 12 pounds usually my, uh, my go-to, bit of a go-to all-rounder. Moving on to combo number, what's this? One, two, three, four. Combo number five. This is another spin outfit, which I'll be using in the lakes, which I do use in the lakes. And this is my heavier combo. As you can see, I've got a little vibe on there because this is the Miller Rods Vibe Freak. Now this rod right here is a seven foot three, three to six kilo. So I got this specifically for chucking around bigger lures. Obviously as the name intends, Vibe Freak, it's made for chucking around those soft vibes, which I've got on tied there. Little Samaki vibe. But I also chuck around big 150 millimeter soft plastics and big hard bodies. Big surface lures, pretty much every big lure, this is what I'll be chucking that around with. Now this rod retails for around about $365. Now you're probably wondering why the Grub Freak here is $565 and this is $365. Now I'm not too much of a rod nerd, but I do know half the reason is because on the Miller Rods Grub Freak, the eyelets that they use where your line travels through is actually made of titanium, which won't rust and last a very long time. And with the Miller Rod Vibe Freak, they don't have those titanium guides. So obviously it doesn't last as long, they rust easier. And uh, yeah, that's why it's at a little bit of a lower price point. Now you're still getting the performance factor out of that rod. And as long as you wash those eyelets, they should last a pretty long time, but 
That's the difference between the 365 one and the 565. And for the reel, I have the Shimano Stratic 2500 with an eight pound Shimano Kariki braid, which is also eight carrier, once again, eight carrier braid. Had this reel for a very long time, had no issues with it, so really recommend it if you're um, looking for a, for a reel around a nice price. I think these go for roughly 250 to $300, so. Yeah, great little reel. And on that Vibe Freak and Stratic, I'll often use a 14 pound leader. This is just gonna cover your overall big flatted and Jewfish. Well, that's hoping that a Jewfish has come along. I've never caught a Jewfish, but maybe one day. Oh yeah, 14 pound leader holds up very nicely to the flatties. And that's why I use it. Last but not least. This is my Shimano Hard Rocker BB and Shimano Nasi Rod. Now this thing is absolutely huge, so I've got to watch out. This is for off the rocks slash off the beach. I have had this combo for a very, very, very long time, and uh, it's, it's holding up. I am due for a new reel on it, but I'm really enjoying this rod. A very good rod for casting out those metal lures. It goes an absolute mile. So the specs for this rod, it is a eight foot three, six to 12 pound rod, and it's actually, very, very sturdy. It's pretty light for how big it is. Like all my rods, they are very, very light. But uh, yeah, this is what I use for casting out those really big metal lures. And I've got that paired, like I was saying, with the Shimano Nasi. I've just got the rod stuck there and hit the light, okay. This is the Shimano Nasi 4000. And I've got that with 20 pound Shimano Kariki braid in the eight carrier once again. And because I am fishing, don't hit anything, don't hit anything. So I'm fishing off the rocks slash off the beach. For the beach, I'll be using 20 pound leader. FC rock is always my choice, as you can pretty much see. Majority of my leaders are FC rock. This is a 20 pound FC rock leader, which will be specifically for off the beach. And when I'm off the stones, I'm using 30 pound. Just so if you get a fish go under the ledge or something, you've got that little bit of extra reassurance that he won't bust you, because I've been busted many times on 20 pound many many times so once again off the beach off the rocks i have covered all my setups and what their purpose is it's been a very long time i might go quickly grab a bite to eat and i'll be right back with you going over the lures that i use Lunch has been acquired and it's time to move on to lures. And I'm gonna be starting things off with the estuary side of things. As you've just seen from the little bits of cutaway footage, I have a fair amount of lures to suit a whole bunch of different applications. But we'll go over the estuary stuff first. We will go over the estuary stuff and this, this, these lures will be ones that I am majority of the time using on that Miller rod and the Infeet rod. I also have a couple of larger soft plastics and whatnot, which I do use on the Vibe Freak, but mainly these soft plastics and hard bodies are covered for my Dial In Feet and Miller Rods Grub Freak. So without further ado, let's get into the swing of things. Starting off with my hard body lures. I also get a lot of questions about this uh, tackle tray right here. It's called a Samaki foam box, I'm pretty sure. And I have this in the large. It's a like two-sided, tackle tray thing which stores your hard body lures and jig heads very very nicely so start off with this side I've got all my brim cranks these are all crank baits which I use for brim and estuary perch we've got pro lures atomics Daiwa cranker pretty much just a nice range of cranks that you would need when targeting brim and perch and over here I have a couple of jerk baits these are four jerk baits a couple of atomics and an eco gear two cranker crabs and an eco gear blade. Now if we switch over to the other side, I'm gonna have to keep moving these pr pretty damn quick because there's a lot of things I have to cover and I don't want this video to go on for forever. But moving on to the other side, this is top water. This is specifically top water brim stuff, brim and whiting. So obviously we've got your bent minnows. I've got four bent minnows in four different colors. I've got atomic, two atomic soft pops, which these are actually really unique. They're, the, they're like a hard, soft, I don't know, it's weird. It's called a, uh, Atomics Semi-Hard, I think they call them. But yeah, it's like a soft hard body. 
It's very hard to explain until you actually feel one for yourself. And uh, over here I have my sugar pens, which also allocate for brim and whiting, and your splash prawns. This is the 95, and I'm pretty sure this is the 75. That is hard bodies. Moving on to soft plastics, which I have a lot of. I keep my soft plastics in this Z-Man little Ziploc thing. And uh, yeah, I have, I have a lot of soft plastics. So let's dump these out just here. Okay, a uh, little bit all over the place, but pretty much what I have in my soft plastics area is a bunch of minnows and grubs. I like the minnows and I like the grubs. That's pretty much what you're, you're using in the estuaries when it comes to soft plastics. But I've also chucked in a couple of little crayfish or yabby imitations. I've got the new Diver Bait Junkie Risky Critter in two colors. So that goes really good on the brim. I have used this a little bit. I used it in one session and I actually caught a fair amount of fish. Nice estuary perch and some flathead. But um, yeah, the rest of these are just Bait Junkie minnows, Z-Man minnows, little Hurricane Sprats, the new Pro Lure Clone Prawns, and that these larger soft plastics is what I'll throw on the Mellorod's Vibe Freak. So pretty much these three plastics are all I'm throwing on the heavier setup and uh, all of these I'll be throwing on the lighter stuff. Moving on to the jig heads that I use. Once again, little Samaki foam case, two-sided. This is the small, I've got a couple of vibes in there. Spare trebles, bigger jig heads. But this is the this is the main money side. I've got all my jig heads placed out here. Along here is one sixteenth. So these are one sixteenth. These are one twelfths. And over here, a couple of one eighths in the mix. And then your hidden weight systems, which is a couple there. I actually just brought another packet the other day that I need to fill up these empty spaces. And for the hidden weight, I'm always using a one twentieth. This makes that lure, any lure that you're using with a hidden weight, look very natural. Moving on to the, uh, the heavier stuff plus bigger hard bodies. So in here, there's a nice combination of like divers, surface lures, jerk baits. Pretty much a nice combo of everything. A little bit tough to get that lid off. Yep, it's all going to come out in one bit. Starting things off, I'll separate these and then I'll keep talking. <laughs> Alright, managed to separate them from the bunch. These are the surface lures that I'm currently using. This is the 106mm OSP Bent Minnow, the new 120mm MMD Splash Prawn. I actually used this probably a week ago and had two flatted over 80 centimeters smash this off the surface and they both missed. There's even a, no, well, it probably doesn't pick that up. There's a teeth mark on each side of that prawn. Pretty upset about that, but got the sugar pen, 120 millimeter. This is also acquired for a couple of my flatted in the high 70s and low 80s. Duo Realist Pencil. I actually got this off a bloke called Shane from Ports Fishing. So Shane, if you're watching this, shout out to you. Absolute legend for saying this, sending this out to me. And uh, yeah, this is what I'm gonna be using a lot over the summer for big flatted. So very loud rattle in it. Looks like something you'd use off the, off the rocks or off the boat for kingfish, but yeah, that's the Duo Realist. 130 millimeter pencil. Um, two little little divers right here. The Daiwa Double Clutch 95 and the Bass Day Sugar Deep 90. These have both acquired for my biggest flathead. So this one right here, my second biggest flathead, going 89 centimeters, which I actually made a YouTube video on and that is doing very well still to this day. And then the Daiwa Double Clutch 95. This holds my PB flathead of 94 centimeters off the beach. Still pretty crazy. Still can't believe that actually happened, but then moving on to the jerk baits. Haven't caught any flooded on these yet, but I haven't really used them much, so definitely gonna be using these more. A couple of duo realists right here. And an atomic little deep diver. Hopefully catch some jewfish on that one day in my life. One day, maybe one day it will happen. Now I've recently been getting into a lot of bass fishing lately, and with the waters only getting warmer, the bass are getting more and more turned on. So I thought it was time to buy myself a bait cast outfit and a bunch of lures to hit up the fresh water, which I'll be showing you right now. Obviously you've seen the bait cast outfit at the start, or a little bit earlier. And uh, here's the lures that I have specifically for fresh water. So a lot of jigs. Now the bass fishers out there would know that bass love a jig. I've got these Vex, I think they're called, yeah, Vex jig. 
literally Vex Performance, I'm pretty sure what the company's called. Got a whole bunch of different colors. Purple, purple and black, green and black. This orange one, brown and black. Um, got a couple of chatterbaits here. Nice little chatterbait. A couple of already pre-rigged ones. The idea with these jigs is you usually put a little trawler on the back. You don't have to, but this gives that lure a lot more action and a better presentation. And I've got a little yabby trawler on the back of that one. A little curl tail on the back of that. And a little minnow on the back of this one. A couple of random jig heads. Uh, a wake bait, which I was using recently. And uh, as you can tell by those trebles, the bass were loving it. Got a couple of nice blow ups on that. And a bunch of little cicadas. Cicadas galore. Probably my favourites, the TMCOs. I haven't caught a bass on them yet, but I know they work very well. TMCO soft shell. And that is a nutter jack. It's called a nutter jack wake bait, pretty sure. And these are the trailers that I'll often tie on the back of those Vex jigs. Just lots of, lots of paddle tails. I've also got some frogs. The new dialer kicker curly. Couple of bait junkie grubs, key tech, little squid looking things, some more frogs, some more frogs, 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 little grubs, pretty much just a whole bunch of trailers and some other top waters in there. So that just about covers my bass stuff. Uh, I've probably said let's move on a lot of times already, but let's move on to the off the rocks slash off the beach setup, lure stuff. You get what I'm saying. Now, when it comes to fishing off the rocks and off the beach, I am not a pro by any means. I'm actually very, very amateur, and I have a lot of the basic gear. Oh, mommy, that's loud. Probably get that thing out of the way. I found this under the house from the 1990s. I know a lot of the old fellows in the comments are gonna be saying some of the best lures come out of the 1990s, Josh. But yeah, I haven't really, uh, haven't used this much. A little stick bait poppery thing. I guess it would work. There's me leaders, like I was talking about, 20 and 30. Always carry them. A couple of big plastics. And these little Yakamito live fries uh, metals. Love using metals. They're super easy to use. You just chuck them out, mine them in. Salmon love them. That's probably the main thing I'm hoping to target this summer uh, off the rocks. Would have to be salmon, bonito, and kingfish. They are my three um, really keen on getting onto off the rocks. And this is the little bag that I usually take with me. This little Shimano little pack thing here with supplies and some scissors. Um, I don't really know what else to cover. I'm pretty sure um, I've gone through everything. Gone through lures, rod, reel, line. I guess I can quickly go over my camera gear. There's a lot of people out there that are always asking me what camera gear I'm using, so I'll go over that real quick. All right, we're gonna have to change things up a little bit here. I've been filming on the GoPro the whole time, but in order to film this little segment, I'm gonna have to use my big camera. But this is the Hero 9 Black. This is my main filming camera, which sits on my chest and obviously captures all the fishing action. I've had this for roughly, oh, I'd probably say about eight to nine months right now, and I've had no issues with it. A couple of batteries overheating here and there, but besides that, it's actually, it's actually uh, held up very nicely. And if you want to know the settings that I use, this may be a little bit tricky to show you. Maybe I can zoom in a bit. And the settings that I use on the GoPro are 1080 by 60 FPS, and I use Super View. That captures a nice range of the area that I'm fishing. Okay, that was zooming in. So yeah, that captures a nice area of where I'm fishing and you can see all the action that is happening. I sound like a full tech head now that I'm reviewing camera gear, but moving on to my big camera, which captures close-ups of the fish and cinematics. This is the Sony NEX F3 AVC HD 16.1 megapixels. Holy f that sounded nerdy. So yeah, this is the camera that I use for close-ups and cinematics and whatnot. This is actually my mum's camera, so shout out to mum for letting me use this. She brought this ages ago, and uh, it shoots at very low quality and uh, very low FPS, hence the reason why I'm upgrading my camera to something bigger and better. It got the job done for the time that I've been using it, that's for sure. The battery life on this thing's really good. Has a very nice zoom in, zoom out. Definitely, definitely time to upgrade and take things to a whole nother level. Pretty much um, covered everything. That is, that is, 
covered everything so thank you all for watching till the end of the video i hope you all enjoyed this gear review and uh it lived up to the standard that you were hoping it would like the video if you did enjoy comment down below on what you thought about today's video subscribe if you're new and you want to see some more fishing content from me i'm going to pop my instagram up on the screen right there josh.fishing.oz cheers for 4k cheers for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one